If you've been in the I Am hobby for at least a bit of time, you've probably heard of Critical. 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 He's a very famous I Am reviewer. <clears throat> World's largest public database of headphone and earphone measurements. That has made many of his own. And very recently, he has gone on to release one of the most awaited sets. By dusk. One of the main selling points of this IM is the included DSP cable, changing the IM sound from great to supposed perfection. There's only one problem. This cable is kind of shit. Before we dissect into this, let's first get an idea of what a DSP cable is and what it's hoping to accomplish. If you want the long summary, check out Kronico's own video. The TLDR is, a DSP cable is essentially a standard audio cable with a DAC built into it. A DAC stands for Digital Analog Converter. Essentially what it does is it enables you to play audio from digital sources, such as your phone, by converting its digital signals into analog. This is a gross oversimplification though. What's important is that this is not special. Even a tiny Apple dongle has it. But what makes this particular cable slash DAC important is that it comes with parametric EQ. Parametric EQ is essentially a more precise version of a standard equalizer. An equalizer essentially lets you adjust sound. Moondrop Dusk itself is essentially a driver swapped Blessing 3 with this special EQable cable attached to it. For some, this turns the Dusk from good to amazing, and I do think he did an excellent job. Also, the fundamental idea of being able to personalize your audio experience without having to carry around a large dongle or sacrifice quality due to applications is great. The problem is the execution. Before I lay out the roadmap, I can make this crystal clear. This is a video focusing on a product, the Moondrop Free DSP and related. This is not a video critiquing any parties, people, or companies mentioned in this video. Do not go around and harass them. I'm sure they have heard the criticisms by now. I will reiterate, this is a video focusing on the product. Thank you. The main selling point of this cable is its parametric equalizer and I'm sure you all had expectations for this cable. So, let's make a chart then. What do we want? What do we actually expect? And what is actually provided? Here's my rough list combined with some things I've heard online. 1. Parametric EQ on the go and for cheap. 2. A good DAC on the go and for cheap. 3. A flexible user experience. 4. A good cable. On the surface, this seems to be what the Moondrop cable should offer. But as many of you may know, Moondrop has incorporated some very interesting limitations on this. For parametric EQ, there are really only three main limitations. One, nine band. This is actually rather all right, considering some other DSP offerings, such as Tanshin's DSP cable only goes to five. This cable also features a negative 12 to 3 dB limitation. Again, this is not too bad, and I'll explain why in a second. One very important part, so this cable does not offer any preamp. What a preamp does, in simplicity, is enables you to boost frequencies by lowering the overall output. If you don't have a preamp, it could lead to audios clipping.
finally, there's a 0.2 to 10Q value limitation, which again is relatively alright. For number 2, I'm going to convert this to something a little bit more relevant. Little to no noise, artifacts, and other sound anomalies. And I suppose this is a spoiler for the rest of the video. Number 3, just a good quality cable. The reason I'm taking a flexible user experience off this list is that already we pretty much know what's happening. There is not a working app for iOS, and there are no apps for computers. Even with these limitations, this cable still looks relatively good. If you're looking for essentially a cheaper Quidex 5K, this essentially is the best you can get. Now I want to clarify here. None of these are specifically mentioned on any Moondrop advertising. These appear to be the information conveyed through online reviews. And now let's talk about how this cable fails every single one of these except for build quality. Well, I have to give credit where it's due. And in terms of build quality, this cable is quite decent. I wouldn't say I would pay $30 to buy the USB-C element of it, but I wouldn't complain too much about it. It's a nice, lightweight cable that is comfortable. There's no obvious microphonics or any of those issues, and it just performs well as a cable. But that doesn't mean the software is faultless. The main concern is privacy. Now, I, I don't want to overblow this, but I think it's important to mention some of these. The main one is that for some reason, despite this being a USB connection, it needs a connection to network, which doesn't make any sense. Like here, take a look. I have my Wi-Fi, my connection on. I plug it in and we see this message and good. Everything works. But now watch this. I'm going to turn off my connection. Plug it back in and nothing like it, it even requests for access but it just doesn't work but that aside i think we should move on to the more major issues let's first talk about number one the actual eq to demonstrate these i'm going to use a real world situation by tuning the 7 hertz x chronicle dioka there is a very specific reason I picked this. Rather crazy trouble, and not a lot of bass. You'll see why this plays a role in a second. One of the main benefits of parametric EQ is you get a more precise and flexible equalizer. While the limitations are there on this cable, you can work around them. For example, you can do something I like to call filter stacking. For example, we see this treble on top of the Dioko. If we try to tune this down, we only have a max reduction of 12 decibels. So how do we reduce the rest of this? Well, it's quite simple. We simply add another filter over it. And now our treble is under control. This works on pretty much most of the frequencies, but I'll explain why you should be very careful when we get to the second section. On top of these limitations, there are just some bugs, I suppose you can call them. For example, for some reason, 12 kHz just doesn't work. For you to understand this, the way the cable actually applies a filter, and when you can tell it actually does that, is not when it says success, because I can literally unplug the cable and it still says successful. So don't trust that. However, the way you can tell if your filters are actually working is when you click apply and this pops up. This is the standard connection request that Moondrop pops up whenever you connect a cable. And when you apply your EQ filter, it disconnects the cable and reconnects it. So whenever you see this pop up, you can tell that it's actually working. So let's apply a 12,000 filter, apply, and nothing. Just to prove to you that this actually is true, let's apply a 12,500 filter.
We went ahead and tuned down the treble, fixed the mids, and now we're on to the bass. So, quick recap, we're filter stacking the treble and sort of tilting the entire response so that we don't have to add more than three decibels of bass. And because of that, we actually have too much bass. We have a lot of sub bass. So let's just put, I don't know, a 65 hertz filter, like on the dusk, and just drop it down. Surely nothing could go wrong, right? Did you hear it? Let's do this one more time, but I'll boost it up a little bit. The winds have grown strong, the birds have come and gone. Mm. I'm looking every day. So what you just heard was a flat 1k tone, and I'm not kidding, this is exactly what the cable produces. I am not kidding here. Now, I, I don't know why, again, this is very strange. This kind of specific issue actually extends from 60Hz to about 160Hz. At 60Hz, the noise is 1kHz, and at 160Hz, it's 500 and as you shift between these, as your filter frequency gets higher, that noise frequency gets lower. Past 160 Hz, it gets so low to the point where you can't really hear it anymore. So I generally advise, in case you for some reason still buy this cable, to stay above 200 Hz on tuning. This only happens on some devices. I was a little worried that I was the only person who had this issue, but it looks like from some online forums, that other people may have had this issue as well, but there's no way I can confirm that. The reason I bring this up, even if it is a more rare problem, is that this is a problem that plagues from a purpose of the product. The purpose of this product is to allow you to tune your IEMs, to get greater fidelity. But this cable is essentially letting you tune your IEMs to get worse fidelity. So you might see the problem here. Fortunately, I didn't discover all of these, so of course I have to give shoutouts to those. They're kind of talking about the same bug, but it just affects different types, like one of them's music and one of them's more general usage. But of course, it's important to give credit where it's due. So the first one goes to Listener. On his online written review of The Dusk, he has a portion talking about how on a song by Radiohead Weird Fishes, there's this weird squelching sound. Next is Psy Salad Audio, which he described a similar bug, but it comes in the form of vocals and podcasts and those type of sounds where you don't necessarily have any sort of background music to cover it up. I don't know what's causing this. My only assumption has been the transition from signal to no signal has a bug that causes this, but I honestly have no idea. 